The way we access the internet while out in public has changed a lot from the early days of internet cafes. Public Wi-Fi is now everywhere. However, what hasn't changed too much is the security on these public Wi-Fi networks. Joining these networks can be risky, as you don't know who else is on it. With the GL iNet AR750S Slate Travel Router, you can get access to the internet using public Wi-Fi with improved network and security controls. In this video, you'll get a rundown of how this router does just that. Welcome back to Dev Odyssey, a developer's journey through IT, where I cover tutorials and reviews of IT tools and technologies. I'm your host, Orist, and in today's video, I'm reviewing the GL iNet Slate Travel Router. Let's dive in. First, I'd like to thank GL iNet for sending me this router to review. I received it for free in exchange for my honest opinion, which I am sharing with you today in this video. To begin, let's unbox this router and get a good look at it. Personally, I enjoy unboxing technology, and I think how a company packages their tech speaks to how good the product is, but also how much they care about the consumer. In my opinion, the Geo iNet slate does not disappoint here. First, we take off the sleeve. After we open the box, we have the slate at the bottom in a protective plastic bag. At the top, we have a Ethernet cord, a micro USB cord, and a USB power block, all nicely packaged in protective plastic. Of course, we have some informative pamphlets and cards from Geo iNet regarding the initial use of the slate and your standard company information. I think they did a good job with the packaging. To me, it shows they care about their customer and also try to evoke their sense of style while keeping the customer informed. Now let's take a look at what's under the hood for the slate. Here you can see it has a simple, elegant form factor. Its footprint is very small. It's roughly the size of my hand and packs a punch with everything GL iNet put into this enclosure. In this form factor, we get the following. An Atheros QCA 9563 775MHz SoC with 128MB of DDR2 RAM. For internal storage, we get dual NAND 16MB NOR plus 128MB NAND flash memory. For ports, we get three 1 gigabit Ethernet ports, one USB 2.0 port, one micro USB port for power, a reset button, a micro SD card slot capable of 128 gigabytes, and that's for external storage, one VPN on off switch, and a couple of two DBI antennas capable of broadcasting 2.4 and 5 gigahertz bands. Now that's some power for such a small enclosure. However, with any good hardware comes even better software to take advantage of what it has to offer. This hardware is powered by OpenWRT, which extends its capabilities beyond most consumer-grade firmware. While OpenWRT has a lot to unpack, GL iNet built their own user interface on top of it that simplifies and highlights the connection, travel, security, and VPN capabilities of this router. Let's take a look at it together. To get started, I'm going to plug in the micro USB cable to the power adapter to turn it on, and we're going to plug this into the computer using the Ethernet cable and one of the LAN ports available on the GL iNet slate. Then to log in, I'm going to use the IP address of 192.168.8.1 to get to the GL iNet user interface. On first login, you'll choose your language and be forced to create a password for the administrator, also known as the root account. After you set up your password, we're taken to the main menu where you have a slew of features available to you. Looking at our first menu option, Internet, 
we have four ways we can connect to the internet. We can use the standard WAN port method, which is cable here, a wireless WAN method that they call repeater, then you have the 4G modem and tethering as the last option that both utilize the USB port and cellular networks. I don't like the wireless repeater name, as that sounds misleading to me and makes me think of Wi-Fi extender. Under the next menu option, wireless, we have our wireless or Wi-Fi settings for 2.4 and 5 gigahertz bands. Here we have the standard Wi-Fi settings that you can expect, along with some additional settings I'd like to mention. In here, you could set up WPA3 security, which is a good enhancement over WPA2 that features perfect forward secrecy. Also, at the bottom of each section, you can click the channel optimization button that automatically chooses the least crowded channel for the best performance. Next menu item we see is client, which simply shows us the devices connected to the network. The upgrade menu is self-explanatory and gives us a few options on how to upgrade our software. You can do so by using an online upgrade, a local upgrade using an upgrade file, or automatic upgrade. Under the firewall option, we have options you'd normally expect along with a little bit extra. Port forwarding and DMZ are there as expected. However, we also see an option to open ports on router, which allows us to designate which ports on the router can receive traffic. However, one addition I wish I saw here was closed ports on router, or what I consider block or deny traffic rule. This would allow you to prevent traffic from leaving on certain outbound ports, which gives you more control over network traffic. For example, closing off non-standard outbound ports that you typically don't see traffic leaving from, which could be an indication of viruses or malware. The next menu item is VPN, which is a highlighted feature of this router. The first four options relate to setting up the VPN client or server under different protocols, OpenVPN and WireGuard. For OpenVPN server and client setup, it's fairly simple, as all you need to do is upload a configuration file and the router takes care of the rest. For WireGuard, you get a few more options here. You can import configs from a VPN provider that supports WireGuard, such as Azire or Molvad, when setting up a WireGuard client. In addition, you can set the client up manually by using the Providers, Configuration, or Manual Inputs tabs. For WireGuard Server, you can simply create a new instance of a WireGuard Server, and then you can manage the options for the server, such as adding new WireGuard clients or peers. We also have an internet kill switch here, which forces your network clients to connect out through the VPN. Otherwise, with this kill switch enabled, your network devices will not be able to connect to the internet without an active VPN connection. The last couple options here are VPN policies and Tor. Under VPN policies, we can designate which network clients are allowed to tunnel their connection through the VPN based on MAC address or IP address. We can also do this via allow policy or deny policy. Under Tor, we can simply enable or disable this protocol, which will tunnel all of the traffic through the Tor networks. And other option is to set the country which the exit node is, meaning which country we want our connection to appear coming out from. Within the application submenu, we have an array of features that supercharge this router. My favorite is the first option, plugins. Here you can download additional software packages, just as you would in OpenWRT, to enhance what your router can do. This is very similar to OPKG and is a difference maker for GLINet routers. You also have file sharing capabilities from within the network and outside of it. Remote access management, such as with GoodCloud, and dynamic DNS to keep your domain name's IP address up to date. You also have Captive Portal, where you can force guest users to accept your terms before logging into your guest network. 
and manage their sessions and redirect them to a web page of your choice. Lastly, we have IGMP snooping, which focuses on listening to IGMP packets and creating a multicast group. This is a very specialized feature that I am not very knowledgeable on, nor have I ever used it before. Under more settings, there are additional miscellaneous configurations. Here you can change the admin or root password, change your router IP address and network range in a standard C-class network, change your time zone, change your MAC address, turn on IPv6, enable custom DNS settings such as DNS rebinding attack protections, forcing router DNS settings on all network connected devices, using DNS over TLS with Cloudflare, DNS crypt proxy settings, and configure DNS server settings manually. You can also configure that additional side button on the slate to turn on and off your VPN client or Tor connection, which I think is a really cool feature for VPN or Tor on demand. The last few options allow us to modify how the router is used, such as regular router mode, access point mode, Wi-Fi extender, or WDS. We can also revert the firmware, which performs a factory reset. My last and favorite menu item is under Advanced, where you can install your own instance of OpenWT's Lucy, and do all the additional advanced configuration that you would under any other OpenWT installation with Lucy. This is especially powerful because if you can't find a setting with GL INET's easy to use interface, you can sure find it under Lucy, such as setting up VLANs. And as you can see, if I click this link here, it'll take me straight to the Lucy interface and I could log in with the same credentials that I established before. In addition to having Lucy available, the router runs an SSH server, and you can log in using your root credentials and run OpenWRT commands, as with any OpenWRT installation. The only difference I experienced here is the SSH login uses a host key algorithm of SSH RSA, which is based on SHA-1 and considered a weak hashing algorithm. Without specifying the host key algorithm, I could not log in over SSH, as you just saw. And once I have specified it, you can see that I am able to log in. This is easily fixed though, and I'm sure future releases will resolve it. And that about wraps it up for our overview of the Slate GLINet software. From everything you've seen and heard, it's easy to see how useful this router can be. When you're out in public and you want to connect to Wi-Fi, it's clear how this router gets you network access securely. If you're in an area that doesn't offer public Wi-Fi and you have a mobile data plan, you can simply plug in the 4G modem or tether your phone to provide internet access to all of your mobile on-the-go devices. Or if you're not out and about so often and suffer from bad Wi-Fi coverage in your home, you could set this router up as a range extender to improve your Wi-Fi coverage. Or if you need to troubleshoot your Wi-Fi connection, you'll be able to use this router and its OpenWT capabilities to sniff your Wi-Fi signal and figure out what's going wrong. Given all this information, my thoughts on this little device are overwhelmingly positive. With the use cases laid out and the features that enable them, this router does not disappoint. While there are slight UI or SSH login issues, there are minor inconveniences and relatively insignificant to the main functions this router is optimized for. That said, I'd recommend this router for any traveler who wants to set up a secure network on the go, but also for any tinkerer who is just getting started in networking. They can use GLINet's simple user interface, OpenWT's powerful Lucy interface, or the backend to expand their knowledge. It's perfect for novices and advanced users alike. I gotta say, I'm looking forward to playing around with it more myself and using it when I'm on the go. One day, I can get rid of my cellular provided hotspot and use this for all my travel networking needs. Thanks again for following me in my journey. I really appreciate it. If you got some value out of this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you like this type of content, and other content around IT technologies, networking, security, and more, go ahead and subscribe to my channel and click that bell for notifications so you don't miss the next video. 
would you get a travel router or a GL iNet router? Drop me a comment below so we could talk about it. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video.